Mr. Brooks is recognized for his questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On August 31st, 2015, I, along with 17 other members of this committee, sent you a letter regarding concerns about the ozone national ambient air quality standards that were in the process of being finalized. The final ozone rule was issued in October of last year. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to enter into the record our letter dated August 31st, 2015. Uh, with that objection, so ordered. Several committee hearings in 2015 raised serious doubts about the underlying science used to justify the proposed ozone rule. You've acknowledged two distinct sets of scientific studies used during the rulemaking process. The first set contains large population studies which you yourself acknowledged as being unreliable. The second set are human exposure studies of which there are only four such studies that the EPA and Clean Air Scientific Advisory Committee both reviewed. In particular, the committee's letter raised concerns that the proposed ozone rule is based on a single study by Schlegel of just 31 individuals. 31 individuals. A remarkably small and unreliable sample size. More disconcerting was the inability of the Schlegel study to replicate key results from two other studies as we clearly stated in this August 2015 letter. In other words, your entire rule depends on one study. Administrator McCarthy, do you agree that the basis for the ozone rule relies heavily on this one study by Schlegel? Well, actually, sir, I believe it, it's part of a, a weight of evidence approach where we have thousands of studies that have been generated over decades. Ozone is perhaps the... Okay, that's not answering my question. Please just answer my question. Do you agree that the ozone rule relies heavily on this one study by Schlegel, yes or no? No, sir, I don't think in an extraordinary way. I think it relies on the entire weight of the evidence before us. There are a thousand new studies that were considered in the latest ozone standard. As a party of this committee's uh, oversight and investigation, we requested documents of the, excuse me, concerning the ozone rule from the Environmental Protection Agency. The agency has produced documents to the committee with massive amounts of redactions. Administrator McCarthy, these are apparently PowerPoint presentations titled Ozone NAAQS, Option Selection Briefing, and Ozone NAAQS Information Briefing. Almost the entirety of it is redacted as non-responsive to the committee request. And let me just show you some of the stuff that we got. We've got 65 pages of responses, non-responsive, 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 65 pages. Uh, I would submit to you that these redactions are unacceptable. And I'll ask you today if you will agree to provide all of these documents to, com to the committee without any redactions. Sir, we have provided this committee, and in the docket of our ozone uh, standard deliberations, it, it is probably would stand this tall if I brought it in. You've got an, an integrated that, that's fine. I'm asking you, are, 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 are you going to are you going to send to this committee the documents that we, have re we have requested? I'm not concerned about documents you have sent. I'm concerned about documents that have not been sent. As far will as you I commit know, we, to? As far as I know, we have provided you full response, but I will I will go back and make sure that we have done that. Redactions are common when it's deliberative material. It protects our ability to work inside to make sure we do our jobs. And so, to the extent then that there are materials that have not been uh, submitted, you're telling this committee today that you will submit them. Only if they're, ava if they're available to me and they're appropriate to submit, I will submit them. That, uh, that is not a blanket statement that I'm going to provide the committee with information that's inappropriate to provide. 